All right, folks, we're not even going to play the channel intro on this. I've been waiting until this evening to record this because I wanted to take in all of the information, see the reactions, and see if there was just any more information or news that popped up. Scott Demore is out. Anthony Ciccone is in. Scott Demore has been fired as president of TNA Wrestling. And we're still kind of lacking answers. We're getting some information out there that, you know, maybe he needed to be more anthem centric. And um, what does that even mean? You know, was Anthem jealous of what Scott Demore was doing because he, you know, was coming across as the face of Anthem, the face of TNA? You know, and I, I just did a podcast several days ago saying, thank God that he is not Tony Khan. There was a point where I wanted Scott Demore to be Tony Khan, to be more like Tony. Thank God he's not. Like, that dude's straight up embarrassing, you know? I've I've had my criticisms of Scott over the years, but it's been more about him as an on-screen talent. Having cringy segments, you know, trying to get himself over at the expense of the wrestlers and some of the, you know, the backstage angles. But I never downplayed what this dude did for Impact Wrestling, for TNA Wrestling over the years. Once upon a time, he was brought in with Don Callis to steer the ship, to right the ship, to to right the wrongs, to get the company back on track. One of those guys, Don Callis, thought he was going to sign Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega to the company. Then he didn't realize this wasn't going to be as easy as he thought, and he bounced like a bad check. Like club security, this dude bounced. He took off. He ran with his tail between the legs, his legs like a coward. Scott Demore stuck around and became the lone person to try to get this company back to respectability. And I feel that there was some jealousy from Anthem because when was the last time we've heard the names Len's asked Len Asper? Was it when he announced the di- distribution deal four years ago? When did we hear his name last? When did we hear Ed Nordholm? I don't even know if he's still around. I don't have a freaking clue. Because they've they've lost their relevancy with us as fans. And you know, and I kind of do understand that because there was an industry and some projects I was involved with a, a, a decade ago where um I didn't surpass my mentor, but I started seeing success on my own without him once I started learning promotion and marketing and I was able to get to a certain place without him and it caused a rift between us you know I didn't I never surpassed them but I you know I got to a point like hey I don't need you anymore and I don't think Scott at the, with the exception of getting a budget from Anthem I don't feel like he needed them like he was doing everything he said he was going to do everything that the company I mean excuse me that the fans needed him to do and yeah I guess the company that that what TNA needed. And, um, you know, he's been relieved of his duties and we, we don't have answers. What pisses me off is that these guys, the Jim Cornettes and Brian Lass and Solomon monsters, you know, and I listen to these guys, don't get me wrong, but you know, you know, they're going to cover this stuff, right? They're going to do podcasts because it's now going to get clicks. These guys don't cover impact. They don't cover, you know, what what TNA has done in the past because it doesn't get clicks unless it's negative. So now they're going to talk about it. When I got into this podcasting space covering this company, I knew it was an uphill battle to get viewers and listeners. I knew it was, you know, Um, just like Scott knew it was an uphill battle taking this job. And he has really knocked it out to the, not knocked it out the park for the most, most part. I mean, has he made mistakes? Has he done things that I've thought were, poor decisions and bad television and all that. Yeah, absolutely. But I've, I, you know, with all the criticisms I've had of the guy, I've never downplayed what he meant for this company, the passion that he has had for this company. If Scott Namor isn't part of TNA, there's no Moose. There's no Jordan Grace. There's no Josh Alexander. There's no there's no Jordan Grace in the Royal Rumble if Scott Demore isn't around. This Anthony Ciccone, you think he's got ties with Triple H, with New Japan, with Triple A? That these these guys just signed this 
agreement, this partnership. You you think he has these 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 plugs? He's got pull with these guys. You think he's going to get a TNA star in the Royal Rumble next year? We're taking a big step back here, folks. There's a rumor now that wrestlers have an opportunity to leave if they want to. Do you think Moose and Jordan Grace and these people re-sign because f- for the money? Like there wasn't a greater opportunity for them elsewhere. A lot of them did this out of loyalty. And what they knew where they you know what they knew their spot was within TNA and their relationship with Scott. Moose signed out of loyalty to Scott. And he signed what the longest contract ever. Some of these people are going to go, folks. I hate to tell you. As cool as the system is, what happens if this set of tapings wraps up and, and half of those guys are gone? What happens if Mustafa Ali now decides, yo, I'm here on a handshake agreement. I, I'm here, you know, Scott got me here, not this goof. What if he doesn't show up and no surrender? <laughs> I, I, You know, I don't know the ins and outs of that as he as he signed any kind of contract for that for being there that night you know what i'm saying i mean i i I guess he agreed to a certain amount of dates you know what about ash by elegance who who probably had conversations with scott about how she was going to be portrayed and he was one of the reasons that she got excited about coming coming aboard like you know what i'm saying what 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 about all these guys on handshake deals? What about these guys and girls at the bottom of the card who are getting paid their indie rate? That Anthem, you know, dug real deep to make sure he can pay their indie rate. They probably lose money wrestling for TNA because at least at indie shows, they can sell merchandise. But people are sticking around because of Scott. There's a wrestler I, I spoke to in private, part of the TNA roster about a month ago. He can't wait for his contract to run out. He And that was with Scott there. Can you imagine now with Scott gone, what the morale is, especially with those who maybe weren't that happy to be there? I mean, this is a complete shit show. This is bad business. They're going to take steps back with this. There's there's no way around that. Anthony Ciccone is not going to come in and have the passion and drive and motivation that Scott had for this company and the connection with the wrestlers. I guess they had a Zoom call that wasn't very well received. He had a you know, a pre, uh, pre-prepared pre speech. And, you know, for those of you who have followed me, I don't read off the dirt sheets. I don't read um, press releases. I react to stuff. And, and that's what um, this is about. I guess they did a Zoom call with, because you guys have already read all this stuff all day. So it's, I'm not beating that dead horse. I guess he did a Zoom call with production staff and people behind the scenes and let him know that there's opportunity for them at Anthem as well. So he's going to make sure they're taken care of. Um, but as far as the actual workers that we're seeing on television, you know, fuck them, right? I don't know what this means going forward. We're going to have to watch this set of tapings coming up or, or whatever, however many taped episodes they've got. And we're going to have to, you know, they're, they're feeding us a spoonful of shit. We're going to have to take it and smile because we don't, we don't know what they're going to do after this. We don't know what what happens when they go to their next set of tapings and who's going to be there, who's going to be in charge. I think it's safe to say that Scott played a pretty big role in booking and creative. Like, is this is this Stooge going to come in and, and take over creative? Is he is he going to book the show? This is going to be a completely different company. And when you know he released a statement, which. It was well written. At the end, I appreciated that he said, you know, when someone, when a high level executive, you know, steps down, um, you know, they can understand why, you know, I'm totally paraphrasing here, but he can understand why there's, you know, we would be scared, (laughs) frankly, you know, why would we be worried about it? Because there's, we don't know what to expect. We don't, and I think as fans, we are scared. Because the company was on the up and up. It was hot. It was doing great things. I was even re- even rebranding myself as Positive BQ because I loved so many of the things they were doing. But I read this statement of his, and it's, it's pretty ignorant, to be, to be honest with you. You can't just come in and be like, hey, you know, 
we're going to change a business model. We're going to get more butts and seats. We're going to increase revenue. We're going to get more viewers on the product. We're going to do this. Do you, you don't think Scott Demore wasn't trying to do that this whole time? If it was that easy, someone would have done it. And this company would be in a better place than it is right now. You can't just bring in an executive from Anthem and think he's just going to turn this thing around. I mean, it's impossible. It is impossible. And maybe he establishes a good connection and friendship with the with the wrestlers, you know? It's it's very, very possible. I'm thinking Scott stepped down on his own, you know, um, and they and they were they're churching it up that they fired him to control the narrative. I had a position um in the Air Force about a decade ago, uh, when I was on active duty where I wasn't able to run my program the way I needed to. So I said, I, you know, if I can, I want to step down. They allowed me to step down, but the leadership and the pe- people appointed above me and my supervisor created a negative that they fired me out of the position because they, they controlled the narrative like EC3, right? Who cares what I look like? And I feel like that's kind of what happened with Scott here. I, I highly doubt he was called in the office and this, this dude was like, Jetson, you're fired. I just have a hard time believing that. I think he probably stepped down on his own volition and they're, they're changing the narrative uh, that, that fits what they're doing. You know, but again, I, I think it's, um, I, th- I think it's really um, ignorant to just think you're just going to come in and, and just do everything that Scott said he was going to do. You know, it's I've I've maybe seen one fan that's a, a happy about this and excited, you know, but I think for the most of us, we're upset about it. And I share your anger. I share your frustration. I share your confusion. And there might be some people out there that think I don't care because I knock the company so much, but it's because I'm passionate about the company. I love the company. I wanted to see the company succeed. People think I don't like it because I talk shit about it. It's the exact opposite. But it's hard to get excited about this. It's probably hard. I mean, it's hard. It's going to be hard for the wrestlers. It's hard for us as fans. Because what we've been enjoying the last month or so, that is not the product going forward. It's impossible for it to be. You can keep the creative staff. You can keep the wrestler. It's not going to because the mindset has now completely changed at the top. And he talked about improving production value and stuff like awesome because that still does need improvement. He talked about improving marketing that can always be improved, but to just sit here and we're, we're going to, you know, open up more revenue streams and we're going to get more viewers. Like, I mean, you don't think the guy here that knows the industry uh, isn't the perfect person to have in place for that. What does this mean for Gail Kim? Is she going to leave? She's not there for the money. Is Tommy dreamer going to leave? Is some of these wrestling minds that they have back in the, back there, like Bully Ray, if he's even really around, what, what does it mean for Giselle Shaw? That's one of my favorite people in the company. What does it mean for Jordan Grace? You don't think Jordan Grace can't go to WWE tomorrow after after that showing in the Royal Rumble? You don't you don't think that if they if she doesn't go to them, be like, hey, I want out of my contract, that they won't scoop her up immediately? I mean, this is a shit show, folks. This is real, real bad business by some people who think they know how to run a wrestling company. And again, I share your frustration. I do. And as critical as I've been of the guy, again, as I say, I have never criticized what he has done for this company and what he's meant for the company. I've actually been appreciating them more and more as as time has passed. But there's people in this in this company we love, TNA, that they're loyal to him and they're going to leave. Whether it's on screen, off screen, people are going to leave. Why would Giselle Shaw stick around? They could they could have a champion, one of their champions, two other champions, just say I'm done. I want out. You know, I think I think I already mentioned like the system. What if the system is gone in a month? I mean, this just it doesn't make any sense. And I think it probably makes sense for Anthem. And they're gonna try to rally the troops. But these are not people we care about. 
What does Len Asper have? 500 Twitter followers? Like, we don't care about these guys. We want them to cut the check, to come correct, break bread, to, we, we wanted them to give a budget where they can really bring some people in. And, and I think there's times where they probably have done that. But you just promoted Scott Demore a year or two ago, right? I just have a hard time believing there was something that he did after everything he's been doing lately where they just they just said, hey, we're done with you. We have to keep seeing what how the story develops, what these dirt sheets are saying. And, and I don't know when we're going to get a real answer here. We may not get one soon. We may not get one at all. Who knows? But it, it is a dark cloud. It is a dark day uh, for us as fans and the people who have been wanting to see this company take the next step because it seemed like they were getting ready to. They're talking about maybe a bigger TV deal. You know, they, it seemed like they were taking the next step and they were the one company without any drama. And now they're just like everybody else. How do we get excited going forward? How do we get excited watching the tapings coming up? Is this is Anthony Ciccone the guy who's going to sit down with free agents and try to convince them to come over to TNA? I don't want that dude sitting down with, you know, with all the the men and the women, all, all the men and women out there who haven't signed deals yet, and we're trying to get him over to TNA. I don't, I don't want him to sit with them. I want Scott to do it. I don't think they realize Dave Penzer said it best. And I buried David Penzer on this podcast for his ring announcing. He said it best. He said that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. This guy doesn't know what he's getting into. He has no clue what he's getting himself into. And it's bigger than just trying to grow the company. It's now you have to cultivate these relationships with the wrestlers and you're not off to a good start, buddy. And it's probably not even his fault. It's the fault of those Above him. So all we can do is, is is try to take the spoonful of shit and smile and try to avoid the television that's coming up. As I say avoid, try to enjoy the television coming up. Enjoy no surrender. But this company is going to change drastically. And unfortunately, this may be what closes the doors ultimately. You know, I think this is a, a, a very damaging move long term. I don't think they realize how damaging it is. They pissed off everybody. This isn't Vince McMahon stepping down where everyone's like, oh my God, thank God, Triple H is stepping in. This is the exact opposite of it. I never expected Scott to be going anywhere. And now I feel bad for everything I've been saying about his on-screen character, but I did that because I also respected what he did outside of all that. But again, there's no Jordan Grace in the Royal Rumble. There's no partnerships with AAA and New Japan. Scott was the guy who went to New Japan years ago to apologize for how they treated Okada. This is just a dude to them. This is just a stooge. And if he thinks this is going to be easy or if he thinks he's got a plan and it's going to work, good luck, buddy, because there's a lot of smaller smaller wrestling companies, uh, some with more resources than you, that can't make it work. So it's it's disappointing. It is a dark day. Um, again, I share your anger and frustration. You, you just cannot remove a guy like this from a company and think it's going to just continue to succeed or continue on the up because there's, there's no way nowhere but down at this point. Now, making a move like this, you, you're, 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 you're going backwards at least two years. I, I, just, I, I just cannot see a scenario where this guy just steps in and turns it around and just does what Scott couldn't do, and all of a sudden – you know, TNA is the talk of the town. This is the hottest it's ever been. It was their opportunity, their one opportunity to establish themselves as the alternative. I've talked about this many times that AEW shit the bed on this, on being the alternative. 
TNA had the opportunity, and this is going to be their only opportunity and probably the only opportunity another wrestling company will ever have to establish themselves as the alternative to what the WWE does. And it's we, we, it's gone. The opportunity is gone now. I, I, I really truly think that. The company is going to go back to what it's been in the Impact Wrestling era, if that. It might go back to, it, this might be as bad as the global, fo- little, guys, the last time that Anthem had their hands in the cookie jar was the Global Force Wrestling era and Jeff Jarrett being in charge. And that was the worst television that this company has ever done, in my opinion. The worst. I'm going to cut it right there, folks. Um, we just got to stay tuned and see what kind of information continues to come out. But there's a lot of pissed off fans, a lot of pissed off wrestlers, and we're going to see changes. And I, I fear that the majority of the changes won't be for the better.